because Dad and I never really did a lot of discussing about how to fly this airplane, uh, I had to basically take a lot of old air show footage of him and sit down and just watch it on the television. I had a calculator and a stopwatch and I would push play on the uh, VCR and time like, for example, from brake release to when Dad first pitched up to do the roll on takeoff in the Twin Beach. You know, I, I figured out how long that took. My sister, who had still had a lot of the air show contacts, called a couple of shows that he had performed at previously and gotten the fuel bills and found out how much smoke oil he used during each performance. So we basically learned how the airplane was configured, how much it weighed and where the smoke oil and the fuel was on board the airplane. We were able to duplicate its weight and balance, so to speak. And so based on the calculations I had, I lined the airplane up on the runway with the same amount of fuel and smoke oil in it that I found out that Dad was using previously ran the throttles up, started the stopwatch, and pulled the gear up at the same point, or retracted the gear at the same point on the stopwatch that he had on the video, looked at the airspeed indicator and made a note, and then when I got to my target time for the entry for the roll-on takeoff, I stopped the watch and looked at the airspeed indicator, and I had my target airspeed to do the roll-on takeoff. And I applied these principles to every other maneuver that the airplane did. I figured out how fast it accelerated uh, and roughly how much altitude it took based on the time and the climb angle that it took to do a lot of these maneuvers. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. I ran a lot of experiments in the airplane, but I, I never had the nerve to, you know, pull it over the top of a loop or a Cubanate or anything like that. I was still working up to that, but I just took it one step at a time. In June of 2006, a Father's Day weekend, uh, was our local air show at Fayetteville, Arkansas. My dad had, and Jim Franklin both had performed there the previous year on that same weekend. And as the ultimate Father's Day present, I got on the phone and I called up three other people I knew that had access to Beach 18s and we did an all Beach 18 missing man formation for my dad at that show. And, and then I performed in the Traveler and the Decathlon as well. Well, after the show, I had a little bit of extra fuel and I was taking the beach back over to Siloam Springs where it lives. And I climbed up high and I thought, well, I've been putting this off, I might as well give it a shot. I ran the throttles up and pitched the nose down and I got my entry speed for the loop. And that was the first maneuver I did. Anyway, I pulled the airplane over on its back, did a loop, and it worked. And I came out of the loop and immediately did a half Cuban 8 turnaround, and it worked. And so I did the other half of the Cuban 8 turnaround, and it worked. And then I did a four-point roll and an eight-point roll, and then did two rolls to the left and one to the right, and then did another loop just for good measure. And I was so excited. I was shaking so bad, I didn't know if I was going to be able to land the airplane because all this stuff that I had been working on in my mind but hadn't actually gone out and done, I was able to do in one flight. And uh, at that point, I knew that this was something I could do. Now the hard part comes. Like I was explaining earlier, when you're out doing aerobatics up high for fun, you don't have to worry about any kind of airspace that you're consuming or you know vertical limits or anything like that. Well, now I had to figure out how to do all those maneuvers and start and stop them at the same altitude or maybe just a little bit higher for safety measure and then figure out how to keep that confined in a very small area as if you were doing an air show. If I started a pull, by the time I got the nose far enough above the horizon to roll the airplane around safely without it falling through the back side, I found that I was recovering right side up again after the maneuver, you know, two and three hundred foot above the ground. 
it works up high, so I, I took it down and uh, I'd mentioned to my sister, uh, who had been on the radio the entire time, you know, telling me what looked good, what didn't, uh, and watching the airplane for any obvious mechanical problems. I told her I was thinking about doing a roll on takeoff. And she said, uh, now we discussed that, you're not doing that yet. This isn't a, you know, a decathlon or something, you know, simple. This is, th there's an art to this and you don't have enough experience. Well, so I, I said, okay, I agree with you. So I simulated a roll on takeoff. I would get my entry speed, pitch the nose up, roll 90 degrees, and then hold it, let the nose fall through the horizon and roll right side up. And I did that a couple of times and all the numbers still sort of worked. So I think the third time I was, uh, that I set out to do this performance, I went ahead and rolled it all the way around. And having done that, I, now, I was now able to do the entire Twin Beach performance. And when I finished that particular practice session, Kyle came up to me and said that performance was good enough to go to Sun and Fun with, which was gonna be our big premiere. We ended up going down there and uh, the beach was a huge success. Everybody just loved it. The uh, music that we paired with the act uh, was designed to be very much a tribute and you know, I was told there wasn't a dry eye in the house because most of the people that were down there most of them had seen the Beach 18 perform before when my dad was flying it, and so it brought back a lot of memories, and people really, you know, uh, were taken by it. And the ones that had never seen it fly before were just blown away with it, you know, because it doesn't look like it ought to be able to do that stuff. And uh, that's kind of where we went. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. This particular airplane, there's a learning curve to it. It's not near as hard on you as an individual to fly it because the airplane itself is limited uh, as far as the G-loading that it can sustain because it is a transport airplane and it's not designed for aerobatic flight. But it's, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you've got it, you've got it. And uh, you know, the laws of uh, doing an air show in this airplane, they're the same all day long, every day of the week. The cockpit in this airplane is somewhat busy when you're flying the routine because not only are you having to be very careful not to overstress the airplane when you're doing the maneuvers, uh, the airplane is kind of blind out the top. Like when you're pulling it over on its back or you're setting up for a, a repositioning turn, you cannot see through the, the roof of the airplane, so to speak. And so you kind of have to take one last look over your shoulder at where the airport was, do your turnaround, and plan on coming out where you think the airport's going to be based on the wind and the airspeed, or the, how fast the airplane's moving and all that. And if you're wrong, it's real easy to just grab that yoke and pull real hard and horse it back around to where it should be, but you have to stop and think a minute because if you do that, you could bend the airplane. Uh, you've got two engines that you're having to take care of, and uh, in this particular airplane, the throttles and the uh, propeller controls walk on their own. You know, the vibration, they either move back and forth, and every time you're setting up for a new maneuver, you have to take one last look to make sure your manifold pressure hasn't backed off so you don't have the energy available or it's overboosting the engine and you have to pull it back. It's a challenge to pull off uh, a good performance in this particular airplane, and the challenge is part of what's so intriguing about it. It's just a lot of fun, and uh, it's a privilege to get to perform for people who really appreciate it.